Welcome back to Learn Neuroradiology. In this video, we're going to talk about brain tumors, specifically the oligodendrogliomas. Oligodendrogliomas come in two grades. You have the low grades, which are grade two, which are simply called oligodendrogliomas. You have the grade threes then, which are more aggressive, have more aggressive histologic and imaging features. Those are grade three. Theoretically, oligodendrogliomas do not transform into grade four uh, astrocytomas or glioblastomas. We'll start with a case of a 41-year-old with vision changes and a lower extremity discoordination. This is just a scout image from a CT. What you see is there is something in the center here where it should not be. So you want to be attuned to that on the actual CT images. Here you see the CT images. Again, you have a mass here in the right sort of an inferior frontal lobe here. You see a quite a bit of mass effect. You see the midline is deviated to the left. You see a lot of effacement of this right lateral ventricle. And then you have heavy calcification here centrally, which is surrounded by an area of edema. Here you can see on bone windows from the same CT, this is very dense calcification. So it's very similar to bone, in fact, in its density. So you, this is suspected to be a calcified mass. Here you see on the MR, you've got a flare hyperintense mass, which involves uh, much of that same area. Uh, you have pretty well-defined margins. You have central areas of low flare or kind of, that are very dark here. You see on a T2-weighted image, again, it just sort of highlights that darkness area. And those correspond to the areas of calcification that you would see on CT. Here you see pre- and post-contrast imaging. These are going to conjure up images of a low-grade tumor for you. So you've got an expanse out mass here, slightly hypo-intense to the rest of the gray matter. Uh, you have areas of low intensity there, which correspond again to those areas of calcification. Uh, but on post-contrast imaging, you have very minimal enhancement there, maybe a little bit of hazy enhancement centrally, maybe a few vessels associated with it, but not much enhancement overall. This is a grade 2 oligodendroglioma. To be a grade 2 oligodendroglioma, you have to have an IDH mutation. You have to have 1p19q codilation. By those 2016 WHO criteria, these are the factors which you must have to be an oligodendroglioma. These patients have a slight male predominance and uh, tend to occur, again, a little bit older in life in the fifth to sixth decade. The treatment for these is resection. Often they do not get radiation or chemotherapy at the time of their resection because they have a relatively good prognosis. Common locations, you'll see them uh, sort of all over the place in the cerebral hemispheres. On imaging, as in this case, you get a heterogeneous mass. Many of them have calcification and cystic changes, and then you'll tend to get minimal enhancement. For our next case, we have a 56-year-old woman with increasing fatigue and speech changes. Here we have a couple of images from an MRI. What you'll see is a tumor in the left frontal lobe. This is a diffusion-weighted image. So you have not, uh, not much going on in terms of uh, hyperintensity on diffusion. Maybe you see some cystic-looking areas, though. Uh, here on T2, you see the situation is much worse. You have an expanse out mass that's filling much of the inferior parts of the left frontal lobe. Uh, it's very expanded. You see the midline deviated to the right. You see internal areas which are hyperintense or cystic. You see a fluid level here, so uh, that's uh, kind of typical if you get hemorrhage into portions of the lesion. Here you see gradient, that fluid level is hyperintense, but you could have relatively well uh, defined margins around much of this tumor. Here are just some flare images scrolling through that tumor, so you see inferiorly by the ventricle and it's taking up a lot of a lot of the frontal lobe there. Here are your pre- and post-contrast images. Again, some areas which are relatively iso-intense, other areas which are slightly hypo-intense. But unlike the previous tumor on post-contrast imaging, you have avid enhancements of portions of this tumor centrally around the rim of some of those cavities, and very jagged, kind of ill-defined, but avid enhancement here. Uh, so a lot of enhancement in this tumor, so you're thinking it's probably going to be a higher grade lesion than on the uh, previous oligodendroglioma. 
This is an anaplastic oligodendroglioma, which is the more aggressive variant of oligodendroglioma. They're more likely to have hemorrhage. They're more likely to have enhancement, both of which we saw in this case. These are theoretically the most aggressive oligos that you can get. When patients truly have 1P19Q codilations, they theoretically never become GBMs. If you do have progression to a GBM, then uh, maybe something unusual is going on, like you had a lower grade precursor that kind of split into two clonal populations or something like that, but that's very rare, and you don't really have to worry about that too much. Here's your summary of oligodendrogliomas. Here you have uh, this grade two oligodendroglioma here, a not very much enhancement in contradistinction to this one here, which has a ton of enhancement, a little bit more mass effect. Uh, so here you can suspect that this one is a higher grade. Thanks for watching our video today. Up next, we'll talk a little bit about some of the less common low grade tumors that you may still sometimes see. If you liked our video, please subscribe to our channel and check out some of the other videos or check out our website, LearnNerveRadiology.com.